interesting to tap into what you said there. Some industry critics say that I know I in Canadian cinema we do make predominantly idiosyncratic, uh, more prone to art house films, and that's why uh, they fail to capture a homegrown audience because we're not making commercial enough films. Do you think that it is actually the films, or it's just more of like a, a marketing promotion problem and distribution channels? No, I think it's the films. I think that it's a, in a funny way almost a subconscious choice because clearly Hollywood occupied that other space and how could you compete because of the resources just weren't here. So it's like any kind of manufacturing industry. If somebody else is doing them better, shoes, purses, et cetera, et cetera, why would you attempt to imitate? It's just gonna be a knockoff. So I think Canadian filmmakers have naturally kind of flowed into areas where other people were not um, excelling. And um, they also had limited resources, so it meant that um, with 16 millimeter cameras. They were kind of going out with their friends, and which is how so many of them actually started, and uh, using their friends, actually. And some of them were non-actors to make these films. So of course it resulted in a very, very different kind of cinema. And I think that they took their cue, I think the, the uh, Quebec cinema took their cue from the French New Wave in the 60s, and I think the English Canadian cinema probably took their cue from people like the John Cassavetes of this world, as well as the French New Wave. You know, people who were breaking all the rules um, that showed that you could actually make film in a very kind of personal way um, without the industrial system. Um, it's always been the trick in how do you actually insert yourself into that industrial system, especially in a very undercapitalized country like Canada. Um, so I think those people who wanted to play in that, um, in that pond, um, major filmmakers, major talent, all went to Hollywood. And there's a huge com Canadian component in Hollywood that we should be extremely proud of in a way, we should not turn our backs on them. I mean, they've, they've contributed, you know, the Ivan Reitmans, the Norman Jewisons, the Jim Carreys, the list goes on and on, have contributed enormously to uh, international cinema. Um, so Canadian filmmakers, I think, just you know, naturally gravitated in a certain direction, and maybe the, our audience, our general audience, doesn't feel that same kind of affinity with their work. Um, it's, just, it's hard to find, for one thing. When they do come in contact with it, I mean, Cam just mentioned Film Circuit, there is this great curiosity, um, largely driven by what they read at film festivals. You know, they're reading about uh, the new Adam McGoyan film, Chloe, which just premiered in Toronto. They don't have an opportunity, a chance to see it. So they're very, very curious about it. And um, it's a little bit like CBC Radio. There's a huge interest in Canadian cinema in the non-urban centers of this country. And um, I think the urban centers are so it's so easy for them to find all kinds of entertainment opportunities, but for sure, American cinema in particular. When you go out into the hinterland, it's very, very difficult to find Canadian material. Um, but there's still that, that real curiosity, real interest in, um, not, you know, in, in homegrown productions. Um, and that actually does give me cause for optimism, that there's still that desire on the part of a certain audience in the country to um, see themselves reflected on screen. The, the other thing I would add is that I think Canadian cinema has always really privileged the writer-director. That's not typically the industrial norm. I mean, typically movies, commercial movies are made in a different way. A writer does one thing, a director does something else. The director's vision has to conform to the writer's vision, but it, it's a kind of a, uh, a dialogue that happens. But in Canada, we've really given our best resources to artists who have a single vision that's expressed both on the page and on the screen. Uh, that's a decision that I think funding agencies make, and I think uh, the whole apparatus of the film industry, critics and festivals and everything else, supports that. But it's, a, it's one way to go. Uh, what's interesting, though, is if you actually begin to think about even the Canadians who've gone abroad and been successful, whether it's Paul Haggis with Crash or James Cameron with his films, they're also writer-directors. I mean, I think there's something that maybe is just uh, in the, the, the creative spirit here, where you want to tell your own story and you find a way to, to use, use all the tools available to you, um, whether you're working at a multi-million dollar level or at a very small, low-budget level. 